Welcome back to the SSL Family Dad channel. We are out in the garage today with the brand new Kubota, not even a year old yet, and we've got a fuel leak. So I think that uh, I, I'm not gonna deal with uh, calling the dealer and hauling it there and all this other stuff. I wanna take a look at it myself first and see if it's something simple. There was a mouse nest in here. <laughs> I noticed the leak a, a few weeks ago. Um, and when I ran it and uh, I, I opened the hood and there was a mouse nest on the top. So I have a feeling that uh, a mouse may have nibbled on a line in here, which wouldn't be covered anyway. So we're gonna look at, uh, I'll take some of the, the plastic off here. It seems to be coming from right underneath the tank and it only happens when it runs. So that gives me a couple clues as to what this is. So let's, uh, let's dig in, see if we can figure it out. Hopefully it's something simple. So I don't know that much about diesel engines, especially modern ones. And so I can only make a few uh, basic assumptions. The fuel tank is here. Uh, and so it's a, it's a plastic, plastic tank. I'm assuming on the bottom of it, somewhere up underneath here, there should be some kind of a, a suction line that goes into some kind of a fuel pump. Uh, and it seems to be only when that fuel pump is, is running that the, uh, the, the leak happens. Seems to be leaking a lot more on the left side of it here. So I'm gonna try to follow some of the tubing up and see what we can figure out. The way I understand it, there's some kind of a return line in here on top of the injectors or something that returns fuel back to the tank. And that seems to be most likely where the leak would be since it's only happening when it's running. There's no leak at the fittings underneath the tank or any of the feeds because just gravity would, would allow it to drip. And it's been sitting here for a few weeks and not a drip has come out of it, only when it runs. So, well, I think I have solved the mystery. Right up here on top of the fuel tank, there was the mouse nest and there is the fuel return. That little rubber line right there, they just chewed into it. Into it. And that's where all the fuel's coming out. So that's the line I have to figure out where it goes to and replace it. Shouldn't be that hard. So it's right, right behind here. So I'm gonna take off the support, see if I can move that heat shield down and see if I can discover where that line goes to. I also wanna see if I can, I think I can pull some pins and take this whole hood right off. I don't know if I can unclip the headlight wire or not. I'm gonna try to take this, this whole hood off and I could access that a lot easier. used size ever. Would you look at that? Man, is that just chewed right through? Two of them. They both look to be the same size. So what I probably do, I wonder if there's a way I could just couple these, a new piece in here. You'd think that the mice would, uh, not like the taste or smell of diesel fuel. <laughs> but I guess, I guess not. All right, now I know what to go buy. Get a bunch of, I'll get a bulk roll of fuel line from the auto store or somewhere. And we'll run two new lines. All right, well, I think I've got a replacement that will work. It's not the same exact uh, tubing. This is the stuff that, that was there, and this is what I have. 
the inside diameter looks to be the same. So I think that'll work. It's a fuel line. I just got it from a local tractor place. Um, I got six feet of it, I think. And all that I'm looking at it, I hope I, I hope I have enough. I think I do. I think they're about three feet each. So. For the first one, just goes to the top of the fuel filter here. I guess it didn't cross my mind that this was below the fuel tank. So I need to turn the fuel off. I looked and there, there is no fuel shut off from the filter up to the bottom of the tank. I see the tube connected here and there's no shut off. So I guess we're just gonna have to do a quick little switcheroo here. Not sure how well this is gonna work. Could be 100% catastrophe. Or it could go great. Well, let's hope the fuel line's the right size. All right, it's about to get crazy. A little fountain of diesel fuel. That's good. Okay. <laughs> That's fun. Just burn all these clothes when I get inside. I think I may have sprayed diesel fuel on the camera. This is the hose clamp that I just put on there and it just doesn't fit in this in this area really well so This one is right in there. See where that connection is? I don't know if this one will have, uh, I'm assuming fuel is gonna squirt out of here as soon as I take this off also. So this might have to be a quick change just like the other one. Hey, look at that. The whole air filter comes out of the way so I have clear, clear access. So there it is. Well, all put back together. So the two new return lines there, all hooked up. So the last thing we need to do is make sure it's not leaking anywhere. So let's start it up, put it under pressure, see what happens. Well, all looks good. I don't see any leaks. But interestingly, it looks like the fuel filter is working. I think there's some pieces of that rubber uh, fuel line that the mice chewed up, made their way into the fuel tank probably and back into the bowl here. I think there's actually a mouse turd in there. <laughs> I think that that might be, I don't know. Decide for yourself. The 
this kind of stuff makes me so mad because <laughs> one of the reasons that we got this new tractor, this was a big investment for us, obviously here uh, on the new homestead. It was part, when we moved in here, we knew that the driveway we had to deal with and getting wood collection and all that stuff, we just needed to have a tractor. And in the past, we've always bought old used equipment. I didn't want to deal with, you know, the expense and payment of having uh, a new tractor. Uh, but we moved in here, we decided, we, we weighed all of our options and the, the past experience we've had with, with the used tractor, um, being that it didn't really work out for us financially, uh, we decided to get a new tractor. And here you go, you, you know, we invest the money, we get a new tractor for the sole purpose that I don't have time anymore with the new job to, uh, to, to work on stuff all the time. I need something that I can come out, turn the key, <laughs> get out and get the work done and get back, you know, put it back in the garage and, and everything be good. I needed something that at least for a while would be covered under warranty, wouldn't be any unexpected expenses, all that kind of stuff. So that's the reason we bought this tractor to do the work we needed to do and to be reliable. And then you have something silly like this happen <laughs> that you just don't even think of. Um, you know, we have mice traps around uh, basements and crawl spaces and other places in the house. Uh, I didn't think about putting mouse traps out here. Now I will. Uh, this is a, a, another area of defense that I have to uh, be on guard for here in the in the garage. But these kinds of things, uh, and this year in general, we've had our well go out. We've had uh, sewer pipe issues, heating, and cooling issues. We've had uh, all of these things happen. Auto car issues. You know, the the transmission went out on one of our vehicles. Brake lines have gone out on my other truck. I've had all kinds of things. Car accidents all kinds of stuff that some of which you guys know about, some of which you don't. We've had a rough year with all these different things. And it always reminds me, there's a, there's a verse in Matthew, it says, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven and not treasures on earth where rust and moth destroy and thieves break in and steal. Uh, just a reminder that all this stuff, no matter you buy something new, you think it's gonna be great, uh, and it is, this is a great tractor, but things can go wrong. Thieves can break in and steal. Moths, you know, moths literally like kind of like mice, you know, they, they get in and they eat stuff up. They eat up your expensive linens and other things. Mice get in and, and, and wreck things. Um, rust, you know, we, these are things we just cannot stop. Rust is gonna do its work on a vehicle, and my vehicle, literally the brake lines rusted out. We had mice eat through this stuff, uh, you know, just, those kinds of things happen to your physical possessions. Anything here in this world is not forever. And it is, we, we can't fully put our faith and trust in anything that we own or, or the things that we buy. Um, you know, it says, store up your, yourselves treasures in heaven. Think of things that are eternal. And that's uh, kind of a good reminder, I think. So, so the Kubota is back in business and just in time where I think we're going to be getting some snow over the next uh, week or two and uh, here into December. And then usually we start to get into January and February, we're going to get some big snowstorms. So we need to have this thing ready to plow the driveway and collect wood and keep our, our house nice and warm and all the things that we bought it for. So hopefully no more rust and moths and thieves will <laughs> will bother us uh, here for at least a little while. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, any tips and tricks for uh, the battle of, of mice? Uh, we actually have one of those little noise uh, maker things in here plugged into the wall that's supposed to like keep the mice away. Obviously that doesn't work. Uh, I know cayenne pepper and other things we can put around and I may may do that. Um, but uh, other than just trapping and killing, anybody got any ideas, I'll take them, put it down below. Don't forget to hit thumbs up on the video for today. As always, we love to, to hear from you guys. Comment below, subscribe if you have not. Uh, we'd love to have you tag along for all the DIY repairs, homesteading fun, and other things we do around here. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.